My new apartment needs a television. We have this great open space here in my living room slash dining room area and this 13 inch column here. We're going to mount the television to it and run all the cabling and make it look nice. Stay tuned as we make her work. Here we have the stuff we're going to mount. We have my 55 inch LG 4K television. We have my Sunny Deal, some nameless brand that's going to be our mount kit. We have a little three outlet power strip that has some USB plugs, you'll see that in a bit. And my Roku Streaming Stick Plus that does 4K as well. Here we chose the height. I'm just marking where it's actually going to go now. First thing we're going to do is just test the location of the first hole. Just see if we run into anything. Um, no sparks flying. <laughs> no sparks flying. No water shooting out. We're going to use this. It's uh, called a toggler. It's a nifty little thing. Basically what it does, and you'll see here in a second, is you push that through a hole in the wall. Pull it out, zip this closed like this. Then you got a threaded hole. This one is a 3 8 16. It's a standard coarse thread, but a 3 8 nice beefy bolt. Um, that we're going to start with this on the center hole here. And we'll move out to a quarter inch when we move out to the side. This is a Unibit. Normally you'd use this for sheet metal and other types of metal, and you would never ever use it on drywall because drywall is going to make it dull. But this thing is so old, it's about as sharp as a baby's finger. So um, we're just going to use it to sort of waller out this hole until it gets big enough for our. Um, for our toddler. So we can get this section through. And there it goes. And as you can see, they break off. So this, that'll be long enough right there. As you can see, there's only just a smidgen of threads this needs to get through. But uh, as long as we get into those, we're good. So now we're just going to do the same thing as before, we're just going to punch some holes with the screw. See if we hit something, we did, that's kind of a good sign. Are you using any of the hardware that came with the mounting kit? No. That, right. that, hard, that hardware is worthless. We'll have it for standby for other projects then. The special screws are going to come with screws special for your TV. Those are important, but generally the mounting, unless you're going into brick, which almost no one is, it's uh, pretty worthless. Let's start with this one. Now, that, that I hit something there is not that surprising. I did hit the edge of a metal stud. All right, so that's why our screw missed on this one and hit on the one above. It just was off just a tiny bit, and that's okay. Because now we know there is a metal stud right there, which is a good, that's a good thing. It just means we'll come in a little bit more on our outsides. I don't really want to punch into that metal stud. It's a lot of work and uh, it's pretty messy for screws. It doesn't really buy you a lot on the strength, especially if you're using these toddlers. So um, for these, this should be able to sneak right past that thing. There we go. And then if I'm careful, right out to the edge there. Now we're going to do the same thing on these, but we're going to come in just a little bit from our original hole so we don't hit any more of those studs. This is where we try to find the right pieces and you sit there bored because <laughs> we're totally not going to cut this part out. Those things are pretty sweet. Well, and the nice thing about these versus the butterfly, the old school butterfly nut, <clears throat> which are still really useful and they're still perfectly strong. These are a little bit stronger, but they also don't fall into the wall. The second you take the screw out, obviously you can see there's no screw in them. They're not falling into the wall. So that's one of the attractiveness. One of the things that's attractive about these is that they stay in place. It's not that uncommon that we need to take a screw out. The day will come when I move out of this apartment. Yeah. I'm going to need to patch these holes up. What you are. Have? That's correct. So the trick to these is 
It really is only a little bit of plastic that's holding that threaded thing on the back side. It's not very strong. So when you're ready, all you do is take a screwdriver, stick it through the hole. The screwdriver's a little big, but stick it through the hole, smack it with your, uh, your hand or a hammer. It'll break these tabs off and that nut will fall down into the wall and these, these things will come right off and you can just spackle right over the holes and you're good to go. Okay, cool. Bob Durante. So stay tuned for the video when I move out of this apartment when we spackle those holes. All right, so we've got our 3816 bolt for the center. This is just a uh, sort of a keeper. And then we'll start putting these are quarter 20s, also very standard American thread size. And these are fixed, uh, these are set, these uh, four on the outside togglers are set for quarter 20 screws. So um, since we got our length, I'm pretty sure our length is good, then we're going to be good to go. Oh, no, they're wrong so size. So what I was talking about, they're, uh, yeah, the blue ones, they tricked me, the bastards. I got one quarter 20. I wasn't careful enough to look at the rest of them and thought, I didn't think I would ever buy the 316 size, but it turns out I did. So since I do have some for sure quarter 20s, we're gonna bust these out, doing the trick I mentioned before, just pop it like that. There's the little thing. And I did all three of these. Oh, what a waste, these things are about $2 a piece. Please like and subscribe and join Patreon to pay for materials we need to have for these projects. So this for sure, check. When all else fails, read the instructions. Check the indicators, this is quarter 20 for sure. Some people might even say that I should run a screw into those threads just to make sure they're not all jacked up. Uh, but we're a little more foolhardy than that, so. Absolutely. And you know, in all my years of using these things, and I'm not, I'm not the guy that uses them all day long every day, so I haven't used, I wouldn't say I've used thousands. But I would say that I've used more than a hundred and I've only had a single time that I can recall. And let me tell you, when it happens, you recall it. It sucks. Especially if you're up on a 15 foot ladder trying to install some commercial TV somewhere. And there's just no getting it in there. Especially when it's the last one. It's always the last one. Right. If your mount is all in place, you're putting the last screw in, like, oh, God dang it, it just won't go in. You gotta take the whole mount down because you can't put these up with the mount in place. You gotta be able to get behind it. And then, of course, you find out that you don't have the right size, and then you gotta run to Home Depot or Lowe's That's or right. someplace like that in the middle of the job. All right, now we're gonna, we're gonna use some power. Got the quarter inch screws here with a couple of washers just to get us wide enough for this thing. And uh, start over here. That went right in. All right, so. Just gonna say, notice that you're putting the screws in loosely so that yes. we can level it up after all the screws right. are in, then tighten them down. It looks like you got it pretty darn good, darn good there. Well, but I'm, I know I'm low on the holes, so I've got to jack it up a little bit. I'll start on this side. This is what happens when you don't have the right tool with you. You improvise. All right, so now we want to see how well the manufacturers <laughs> put this thing together and they did a piss poor job of that as you can tell but we might actually let me put some weight out here it might settle itself so okay. you're saying it's not center a little bit I'm saying this is not level to this oh right so that's I mean yes. it's close but it's just these screws here but we're gonna I think we're gonna adjust it anyway Now for the fun part, unboxing a TV. Smells like China. So, you're gonna look for the, uh, this is gonna be the bolt pattern here pretty low on this TV, and uh, it's not going to surprise me these screws aren't long enough, but 
Holy cow, I think they might be. Nowadays, it seems the TV manufacturers, maybe some of them are getting smart enough to want to bring their own screws, which is why, probably why, this baggie of screw parts is so tiny. Such a tiny bag. It used to be these bubble packs, there'd be 12 of them across with all different types of screws and, and spacers and all kinds of stuff in them. They're just not necessary anymore. Or at least a lot of times they're not. More and more finding that the manufacturers are putting the right kind of screws in. If for no other reason, then they keep some guy from putting a screw in there that's too long and jacking up the back of the board. So, let's see. Does this have a left and right? Well, it does appear to have a left and a right. Let's see, does it? No, it doesn't. They're unisex. That's a good thing. Well, since we also gauged the height of the TV off the floor, sort of looking at the center of the TV, I'm gonna put these about as high as they can go so we can kind of take advantage of our original idea for how high the TV should go. Yeah, it really sure. won't have an impact on anything. We want to keep in mind though that the TV is the weight in this thing and these are the things the TV's hanging from. There's an instinct to push these screw holes if you want to rust, rest against one of these, the end of one of these holes, there's an instinct to push it the wrong way. So we want to keep in mind that the TV wants to go that way, the mount wants to go that way, if the screws should ever loosen up from vibration, from the speakers or anything like that, we want to make sure that the TV falls a very small distance, if any, against one of these one of these positions. So we're going to try to make sure that we set it up for success. I got work too well, so all right, we're just going to go right to the bottom. Don't strip these out. That would be bad. Be super gentle when you're getting them started. A stripped out screw would be a return generating event. Yes. Especially if mounting was the only way you were going to go. If you could just say, ah, oh, screw it, I guess I won't mount it, then you won't have to return it. But if you can't say that, then you're in trouble. Now notice I don't really use the clutches on these things. I like using my own, you know, I got, I've kind of got a tuned sense uh, of years of uh, doing manufacturing kind of things that... I like to know exactly how much torque is on this stuff, not from some device, but from my own from my own sense of touch. And I've gotten real comfortable with that, so I just go by how far I feel, and uh, when it starts to give out on me, then I decide it's tight enough. Which is usually still tighter than it needs to be. All right, that's that. They do not need to go tight at all. They just need to go up far enough. So, here you can see how the mount looks. Doesn't seem to be struggling the tiniest little bit. So most of these mounts will come with some sort of a, a way to uh, adjust the tilt back and forth. And uh, sometimes they're a little bit of a pain in the ass. These in particular are designed to go into a square hole. That square hole is, keeps this, when there's a square shoulder on that screw there, it keeps the screw from turning. So you don't need to put a, and you wouldn't be able to, it's a perfectly flat head, or a rounded head, so you wouldn't be able to put a, uh, a tool into it anyway, but sometimes these things are a god awful pain in the neck, especially if you got man hands. It's kind of you can get knobby. that's all it is. It's super simple. There's nothing to it. And then you just once you set your your angle of the dangle there, you just tighten these things down, and they they sort of hold it in place. Not like that. Crank her down. Got the other one in already, so I'm gonna crank that one down too. So this has three outlets, which is two more than we probably need, but it has these fantastic USB chargers. We need these ports to power the Roku, 
there is a USB port in this TV, but it turns off when the TV turns off, and that can be inconvenient. It's better to have a separate power source for the Roku, and that's what we'll be doing with these two USB chargers here. Here is our Roku streaming stick package. It's amazing what technology can do nowadays. That's all it is. What I like about these things, they just kind of plug in. We'll put the top one here. Nice and straightforward. Well, let's do this. Let's unplug it. Plug this in. And plug it back in. Okay. So this gives us an idea of how close we need to put the power strip to where the Roku's at now. It's nice on the arm, but... Yeah. For the important parts here, we got to get these all this gobbledygook label garbage off of here. Okay, let's take a look at the finished product here. The only thing we haven't done is finish up the wiring in the wall, which I don't have the parts for right now. And you can ignore this cable because I'm powering our lights with that. This cable here, of course, powers the TV. We have a little, little zip tie here to help relieve some of the stress on the on the Roku here, so, so it's not pulling it down and putting stress on the outlet there. It's a very simple solution for this, and we'll uh, keep that from giving, giving us trouble. We mounted this power strip here right on the mount arm here that holds the TV. As I said, it has a couple USB jacks here, which is nice. Everything's nice and zip tied. The cabling is kind of bunched up behind you here. Kind of simple, kind of loose. So there you go. Now we're just going to tidy up where the power gets to the TV. I'm just using these little nail wire guide things. Pretty straightforward. The trick is though, we're trying to hammer this into the molding and not into the drywall. Because it's not going to have much purchase into a piece of drywall, but it'll stick in wood. And here you see the final result. We had this 55 inch television here. We mounted it on this 13 inch column. Ran the cabling along the floor here so nothing's on the floor. There's no wires dangling around looking like a rat's nest. And we're super happy with how it turned out. Anyway, thanks for your support. We appreciate you watching the videos. We appreciate you liking and subscribing our YouTube page. Feel free to hit up our Patreon page. You'll see a link below in the comments. And uh, if you'd like, maybe throw a dollar our way. Uh, it goes a long way towards us buying supplies and doing projects like this if we have funding. We like to do cool new things. We're here to learn and discover. Those are our favorite words. And uh, who knows what we'll come up with. If you have any ideas or if you'd like to let us know what we did well or what we did not so well, again, feel free to head down to the comments cemetery below and make a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again and make your work. Mm -hmm.